Hi, I'm Doug Miller, W4DML, and I've been asked to make a presentation on nano VNAs. There are a lot of people in our group who have purchased nano VNAs or want to purchase nano VNAs, but really don't know what to do with it or how to use it. My agenda for today is what is a nano VNA? Here's an alternative to a nano VNA, history of the nano VNA, how to purchase one, books, other publications, and videos. What do you do with a nano VNA? Calibration and demos. Okay, let's get started. What is a nano VNA? Here are two examples of nano VNAs. Nano VNA is a small vector network analyzer. And these were the two examples uh, that you just saw are the two sizes that are commonly available. What it, how it's different is that it measures amplitude and phase. It's able to provide complex numbers used in calculations for displayed results. A VNA has an input channel often labeled CH0, channel 0, or S11. It has an output channel labeled CH1 or S21. VNAs can have multiple sets of uh, input and output channels, but the small nano VNAs have typically the two ports. Typically, a nano VNA has a 2.8 inch or a 4 inch touchscreen. They usually cost in the range of $60 to $150. Uh, the, the two VNAs you saw, the smaller one, it cost around $60. The larger one cost around $150. I personally prefer the 4 inch because it's much easier to read. The, the numbers and letters tend to disappear even with good reading glasses on the small nano VNA. Normally, the larger size has N connectors and the smaller size has SMA connectors. I have not seen one with VHF connectors due to the fact that nano VNAs are capable of typically measuring higher frequencies at least almost 1 gigahertz and higher. If you remember from your ham radio testing days that the uh, PL259 is not a good connector for the higher frequencies in ham radio. Okay, now let's talk about alternatives to VNAs. Is there an alternative to a VNA? Yes, there, there are several. You can purchase full-size VNAs for tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, a full-size uh, VNA is shown on the next slide for $45,000, and that's a used VNA. You can purchase multiple instruments to do what one VNA will do. A spectrum analyzer with tracking generator can analyze devices such as filters that require an input and output. They're typically over $1,000. The nano VNA can analyze these types of devices and perform many other functions that a spectrum analyzer with tracking generator cannot perform. The nano VNA is also theoretically more accurate. And you can purchase an antenna analyzer with a built-in TDR for much more than a nano VNA cost. Now, let's talk about the history of the nano VNA. In 2016, a Japanese man that refers to himself as EDDY555 offered a nano VNA for sale with some success. And then a Chinese man who refers to himself as Hu Jin made some improvements to this design and began selling them in uh, large numbers. He did receive permission from EDDY555 to uh, use his design for his product for the nano VNA sold today. Some other software packages are available. How to purchase a nano VNA. Most of the VNA sold today are sold on Amazon or other similar sites. If you decide to buy one, you need to do some research and check out some of the reviews in the AWRL, QST, and other publications and the RSGB or Radio Society of Great Britain. I understand that there are some inferior copies, but I am not familiar with the particular names of these copies. It's probably a good idea to look at the numbers sold and the reviews for each particular vendor. Next, we'll talk about books, videos, and other publications. I'm aware of two books on nano VNAs. These are a guide to nano VNA by Schwarzler and Schwarzler, and nano VNAs explained by Richards and published by the Radio Society of Great Britain. Both of these books are sold by DX Engineering, and I like both of these books. I prefer the RSGB book because it actually lists the settings for using the VNA for various operations. These settings can be stored in memory and that can be recalled. 
When I first got my Nintendo VNA, I had to figure out how to set it up for various operations. What a pain that was. There is an article in the May 2020 QST entitled Nano VNA Vector Network Analyzer by Salas. There have also been articles in QEX, an AWRL publication, and RSGB magazine. There are many videos on YouTube that go into great detail about calibration and the many uses of a Nano VNA. There is also at least one user group for the Nano VNA. So what can you do with a Nano VNA? And here are some examples. A Nano VNA can be used to analyze antennas. You can optimize your antenna tuner before applying power. And I, on vintage uh, tuners, uh, I, I use the, the Nano VNA to uh, get the tuner pre-tuned before I key up the amplifier and put unnecessary power out into the antenna. You can measure feeder loss. You can measure resonant stubs. These stubs are used uh, in certain types of antennas that have to be a, a certain frequency. You can use it as a time domain reflectometer to measure uh, coax lengths and determine any problems with coaxes. If you need to measure RF losses in switches and relays in your antenna line, you can analyze those. You can analyze passive filters. And this is how I got involved with the Nano VNA. Originally, I was asked to, uh, to uh, tune a uh, repeater duplex cavity filter. And I ended up buying a Motorola communication analyzer, which had a tracking generator with a spectrum analyzer in it. And it was used, old, and still over $1,000. And I purchased this when I was still gainfully employed. There's, after that, I uh, saw a, a Siglent spectrum analyzer at uh, Dayton, and I ended up buying that, and it was had a much better, better pick for, uh, display. Uh, it was uh, a lot easier to use, and it was <clears throat> over a thousand dollars. Then I discovered that you uh, that there's a, a array of solutions had a computer uh, interface VNA that was very accurate. So I bought one of those one year at Dayton, and it it worked great for analyzing antennas and. Uh, other devices filters. Then I discovered the Nano VNA for $50 that would do everything these high dollar uh, pieces of equipment would do. That Nano VNAs can also analyze active filters and amplifiers. They can measure attenuators. They can measure directional couplers, balance, chokes, ununs, crystals, cables, etc., etc. And there's probably many other things that I have not listed. Before you use a Nano VNA, you must do a calibration. Nano VNA should be calibrated with cables that will be used to connect to the device under test. This is also normally listed as DUT for device under test in publications. Normal calibrations include calibration with each of the following conditions. The short for this is called SOLT. The first calibration you make is by connecting a short to the channel 0 or S11 input of the Nano VNA. Uh, on the menu for the Nano VNA, it will have under calibration, it will have short. So you click that and when it gets through, it will give you a check mark, say it's complete. Next you connect an open uh, connector uh, calibration device. And these do come with the most Nano VNAs. The reason you have an open uh, uh, device to connect is it accounts for any other losses even though it's open that might be caused by that device being connected to the the coax. The third you connect a 50 ohm load to the the channel zero and run that calibration. The next uh, calibration is through connection between channel zero and channel one. The through connector is a uh, like a barrel connector that's connected between the channel 0 and channel 1 little uh, short coaxes that you have connected to the Nano VNA. These are the, for the SMA or the uh, are also for the N-type connector. After you go through the first calibration procedure, it's important to store it in the position in the uh, Nano VNA called Recall 0. Recall 0 is a memory for specifically storing your latest calibration. 
when the nano VNA is booted up, it goes to this memory and retrieves the calibration data. And you don't have to go through the calibration again unless you change the input cables in some manner. Next thing we're going to do are the demonstrations. During the demonstrations, I'm not going to show all the menu settings you have to go through. You need to buy the book or look at the YouTube channels to make these, uh, what, to determine what these settings need to be. What I'm planning to do in the demonstration is I'm going to do three demonstrations. One is for an antenna analyzer, one is for a filter analyzer, and the third is for time domain reflectometry in measuring coax cables. This is the first demonstration I'm going to do with my nano VNA. This is the 4 inch touchscreen nano VNA. What you're looking at is a uh, the VNA with end connectors with a short piece of cable connected and an adapter to connect to a, uh, a small antenna. For the demonstration I'm using a 440 uh, megahertz uh, dipole which is easy to handle for a demonstration and I'm going to connect it to the uh, nano VNA. Now that I've hooked the uh, antenna to the nano VNA, I've turned it on with a slide sh switch here on the side. There are three buttons on this particular nano VNA that you can use to go into the menu or you can touch the screen. I'm going to use the button to hit the center button and I will toggle down to recall and hit the center button and it gives me some choices. I have previously saved the settings to analyze antennas into recall one. So I've selected recall one, I hit the center button, and now I have the antenna analyzer, antenna analyzer hooked up to my little uh, 440 centimeter antenna. And I, if you uh, the, see the side buttons here, you can use to move this cursor uh, labeled number one down here. You can uh, move it to any point on the plot. But I, if I move it back here to the bottom of the plot, you'll see that up here at the top it says the uh, SWR is 1.27 and the resonant frequency is 429.500 megahertz. That's basically how you use a nano VNA as an antenna analyzer. Okay, my second demonstration is how to use the nano VNA for analyzing uh, passive filters. Uh, if you look here at the top, I have a 40 meter bandpass filter that I built. It's designed to just only allow the 40 meter band frequencies to pass so you don't interfere with other radios adjacent trying to operate on other frequencies. I've connected it to my nano VNA and now I'm going into the menu and I'm going down here to recall and I know in my second memory I have the uh, everything program uh, set up to, to do the filter analyzing. So uh, here you can see that here's the plot, very similar to the one I did previously on another analyzer. But if I move the uh, cursor up here to the center, you will see that uh, uh, the frequency is in the 7 megahertz uh, frequency, 7.37, but it goes from It'll pass anything from 8 to 6 megahertz. But anyway, that's how you can analyze uh, filters to make sure they're uh, passing a frequency or, by, or blocking a frequency that uh, you want, don't want to interfere. My final example for another use of the nano VNA is to use it as a time domain reflectometer. This is used to measure cable length and determine if there's any shorts or open areas in, in a uh, coax cable. Here I've got several pieces of coax cable connected with uh, barrel connectors and here the end is here and the, uh, the, it's connected to the zero channel of the time domain reflectometer. Now I've turned on my VNA and I'm going to go into the menu, go down to recall and go to recall 3 where I've stored the uh, uh, setup for the time domain reflectometer. Okay, it takes a minute to analyze. There's a little cursor here. It's hard to see, but I'm going to, when this thing settles down, I'm going to move it down to the point where you get a deflect, slight deflection up.
right about there. That tells me up here in the top, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but it says the, the coax is 12.7 uh, meters long, and I know from having measured that's, uh, that's uh, correct. Okay, I'm going to unscrew the 50 ohm load, and this is the same as an open coax. Or I can screw, I can also screw the open calibration on here, it won't make any difference. Now you can see at the end of the same point when you got the deflection down, that says you got an open coax. If, it, if I disconnect the coax at this point, somewhere in the middle of all this, that point will change. And you can see it's up here, it's shorter. If I went down, it would tell you that it, that's where it's open. So that's what an open point in a coax, if you know it's uh, supposed to be 100 meters long and you see that, that's where your problem is. Now I'm going to take the open off and I'm going to put a short on to show you what a short looks like that could occur at any point in the coax. Okay, that's what a short looks like at that peak. So that's at 12.7. It's hard to see the uh, little indicator, but that's where it is. So at 12.7 meters, this high deflection to the top says that's where the short is. So you see this would be very useful for determining where the uh, problems are in your coax or where your coax is, is performing as, as designed. This is the end of my demo, but remember there are a lot of other uses for the Nano VNA that I haven't covered, and you should be sure to try to investigate this and see what else you can use it for. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much for watching.